It's August 16th, and this is a weird episode of The Link Show that's not the thing, but I don't know. It's government, social, and security. And security. Because Because business is really long. Business tomorrow will be, (laughs) although this did turn out to be a little bit longer, it never splits evenly. Yeah, the quarter's over, the earnings are in, there's so much business news. But there's also quite a bit of government stuff going on. It seems like the uh, FTC in particular is working hard. And this is more of a, uh, a warning shot, I suppose. Data, quote unquote, surveillance crackdown begins with FTC privacy pitch. A Bloomberg Law is talking about this like this is, uh, well, I read this and I was excited by the headline and some of the summaries, but then I read more into it. And it seems like the FTC is going to give companies a pass on collecting a lot of information, but there are some cases where it would be over the line. Yeah, like the whole, let's just not have data brokers, not on the table. Yeah. I guess that would be too destroying the economy, maybe, because we depend on it now. Yeah, think about like Craigslist, or uh, I was going to ask Krista about uh, the Facebook marketplace, something like that. So, you know, you just have your name and your email address. This seems like that would give that a pass. Or like the level one forums is like, ah, you know, you're you're just talking to people online. That's not really a thing. Whereas uh, maybe if you were uploading your medical records into a medical portal, then maybe there would be some liability there. But for like the Cambridge Analytica stuff where it's not really super personal information, it seemed like that would give them a pass. Hmm, that's bad. Also, we should mention that Krista is out this week. Uh as far as we know, she's out for all three episodes. So everybody always asks. I was out. I was no. I made the news. I was out for the weekend. I've got something bacterial going on. Well, people in the comments are always like, "Where's so and so?" And then I hear, it, and obviously the answer is Nanya. <laughs> Somebody will respond to your comment, and tell you what that is. <laughs> now, last week we talked about the FCC and they were looking at SpaceX and they were like, well, SpaceX, we told you we were going to give you this money. But at the time, your service seemed really amazing. Remember when the first numbers came out Yeah, for uh, Starlink and everybody was like, oh my God, you think they can keep that going? Well, maybe the answer is no. <laughs> or maybe they just didn't want to give him money because everyone hates Elon Musk now in the government. FCC cancels $886 million in funding for SpaceX's Starlink. And this is uh, the FCC. This is not Lena Khan. This is uh, the other one. Rosenworcel. Rosenworcel. Yeah, yeah. They had harsh things to say about, the, uh, about Starlink. Now, on the one hand, Elon Musk did overpromise. He said that it was it was going to be a hundred megabit down slash twenty meg upload, and according to the FCC, most people are only able to just barely get close to a hundred, but the upload is more like twelve, not twenty, and so that's what the FCC is citing in this. They're saying, well, you didn't you didn't meet what you promised. How much money do we claw back from traditional ISPs for that same reason? Zero dollars. And how many of those would be guilty of this? All of them. That's, that's kind of what I wanted to point Like, as a practical matter, if you live in the middle of nowhere, even though, you know, even though it's it's Elon Musk, he's still doing a better job than the incumbent ISP. So if you're going to play this game, FCC, what you should do is uh, ISPs like the guy with the mule in Vermont, those kind of ISPs are at the top of the list. And then, you know, somewhere in the middle is Elon Musk with Starlink. And then at the very bottom is all of the incumbent companies, which actually enjoyed most of the funding anyway. Yeah, so. Uh, that's the only real fair way to do it. I really think that, I don't think that, I, I don't agree with the FCC on this. I think they should give Starlink a little bit of a pass here. Or maybe a little bit of the money. Yeah. Doesn't have to be all or nothing. IRS has been in the news this week. <laughs> and uh, not popular headlines. Turns out people don't like the IRS pretty universally. <laughs> And uh, this is not going to win them any new friends either. The IRS ramps up its effort to tack the crackdown on crypto tax evaders. So uh, this was uh, S Fox. If you've been dealing in S Fox, uh, sorry, they're hiring eighty-seven thousand new agents. And oh boy, we've got some stories in the uh, in the nonsense section as well. <sighs> it's probably going to be bad. And this may seem like a bit of a time warp. No, this is a new one. This one is based on the ad business. The DOJ is reportedly prepping an antitrust suit against Google 
over its ad business. So this has to do with publishers and what rates Google pays the publishers and uh, you know a lot of there's a lot of dirty laundry here. It's going to be the, interesting. The targeting, yeah. The data. Is it too much? Is there something in there about being pregnant? Well, that's the new line that we can't cross. It, it's uh, you know I was thinking about it in the beginning. Google as an ad broker kind of made a lot of sense, but where we are now, does the old model make more sense in the modern world than the new model? Which is when you want to advertise on such and such website, you just contract with such and such website and there is no middleman but see that makes it difficult because the tracking it's so easy when the tracking is built in because hmm. that's the hard part about building that right it's not necessarily that they want to track you even though they do or they want to sell your data they do someone could build that business model without that but what you have to do is you have to prove that someone actually clicked on it hmm. and you also kind of want to find out if they did anything after that or if they're just clicking from a click form and the publisher would not be able to do that. And it would be up to the person buying the ad to have their own infrastructure to do that, which they don't have because they're stupid. Right. So, no, we can't do that. We could, but it wouldn't be nearly as effective because by default, it wouldn't be as evil. It seems like whoever is actually running the ad eventually has an overwhelming impetus to just be dishonest about everything. That's true of almost everything. <laughs> And what a great example of that. So Iran, they have some sanctions against them. They're not allowed to buy certain equipment. They're not allowed to do certain things. Certainly can't do those things in U.S. dollars, which we'll talk more about later. But it's not that hard to get around, honestly. <laughs> U.S. claims a Chinese supplier violated export rules by helping ZTE sell telco equipment to Iran. And that wasn't the best headline that they could have gone with for this article because it turns out that the supplier in question said, yeah, we, what of it? <laughs> yeah, so Far East Cable bought $164 million worth of ZTE equipment, and then it sold $189.5 million worth huh. of ZTE equipment. It's Quite good. a nice little profit That's there. That's interesting. All you have to do is dodge sanctions. So easy. So, uh, yeah. That's one of those deals, though. It's like, okay, we're going to go after them, but what can we really do against them? Maybe they got a, a U.S. presence. I don't know. Here's a little bit of good news. Just a, a tiny pinch. And uh, we talked about this, right? So actually there were several cases like yes, this. Yes, yes. Where you make a post on social media that, you know, like you're just out in your free time, your private life, you do that. But then all the institutions that you're a part of look at it and they're like, oh, no, 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 we can't have that. <laughs> That's not model student behavior. What right do they have? Victory, federal court upholds First Amendment protections for students off campus social media post. Even though the student had agreed to a quote-unquote media policy, it doesn't matter. It's First Amendment. See, we need Krista here to comment on this crazy art. EFF intern Emma Planky contributed to this blog post. you think she did the art? I don't know. That's good, though. Good job, Emma. Is, it, is the joke there that it's a cat of a different color? Is that a Cheshire cat, maybe? Maybe. I'm not sure what the concentric stripes mean. And uh, government, one of the things about government is it's hard for, like most of the ideas that government comes up with are so bad <laughs> that we would no one would ever agree to them, no sane person. And then we have enough partisanship that you could never force it through because the other side is going to be like, no, that's bad, we're not doing it. So what you have to do is you have to find something that everyone almost universally agrees on. Like, how about we don't have burn pits for our soldiers? <laughs> That was so hard to get pushed through. And then you take that. Yeah, for good reason. Then you take that and you put, what was it, $400 million of discretionary spending on it? Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, no, no, we, we don't want that part. The first part was good, but we can't have that part. And they're like, oh, you hate the soldiers. <laughs> so if you just want decent broadband, clearly you hate the planet. U.S. lawmakers always urge joint use of funds for broadband and EV charging stations. I, you know, again, Elon Musk has brought broadband to where no one was willing to bring broadband. And those places need broadband before they need an EV charging station. Yes. <laughs> because guess how many places actually need an EV charging station? Not very many. Zero. Zero <laughs> is the number. Charge it at your house if you want to be a hipster. 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> it is so beautiful when sociopolitical things happen and these companies, they don't have a choice. No. They have to choose a side and time after time, they choose China. Yeah, they do. Apple warns its suppliers to follow China rules on Taiwan labeling. What, what, what does this even mean? It turns out that when Apple is importing stuff from Taiwan to China, that if it's not labeled as in, yes, we're part of China, the Chinese customs people will just trash it. And that might interfere with Apple's production of phones. <laughs> they might be thinking, well, that doesn't that make it false? That doesn't that hurt the whole distribution system because it's not actually telling you where it's from? Well, there's actually two terms that are acceptable, and we just got in the paywall here. <laughs> you can be Taiwan China or Chinese Taipei. But ah. You cannot just be Taiwan. Mm. And uh, good lord, they've really ratcheted that up. But Apple isn't really directly involved in this what apple is saying it's like hey all of you supply chain people you better get on board with this because <laughs> yeah. we don't want anything hang, hung up in customs you know what china's other option would be have those phones made in the philippines or in taiwan but taiwan's too expensive maybe because they don't have a repressive government <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the old chips act uh i didn't put the story in but biden signed it it's good we all knew it was going to happen yep. it is real now and more companies are coming on board and saying, yes, we would love to take some of this money. Micron to invest $40 billion in U.S. chip making. Woo. Yeah, Micron, they're the people who partner with Intel about the whole Optane thing. I'm hoping that means Optane's not dead, but I have no data on that. 40,000 jobs, 5,000 they say are going to be highly paid, which means it's probably... You know what the other thing that has corporate. to go hand in hand with this is that if we're going to have 40,000 jobs in chip manufacturing... We don't have enough people in the pipeline for that. And a lot of the people that are in the pipeline are student visa holders. We're going to have to completely overhaul the way that we do visas and welcome those people to stay in the United States if we want to retain the skills necessary to keep those things running. Did you, <laughs> did you get some cash in the mail from uh, Pachai? Because that's exactly what he said. And the surveillance state is extreme it just gets worse I mean, a lot of people think that the ankle monitors go too far but yes. it is an alternative yeah. to being incarcerated so even if it's insanely dystopian is it still better than being in a detention center i have a slightly different opinion but uh the the guardian's uh, headline is facial recognition smartwatches to be used to monitor foreign offenders in the uk so basically you're on vacation, but you've got some minor criminal offenses. Maybe you I stabbed an ex-lover. I don't know. I don't think that's the, the use case here. <laughs> I think you just crawled over some razor wire. Oh. And they rounded you up. And okay. instead of putting you on the catapult back over the straight, <laughs> they're going to do this instead, which is going to be very expensive. You, you wear a smartwatch that's kind of armored looking, and it looks at your face and, you know figures out if you're really who you say you are and blah, blah, blah. Do you remember the stories about the... Was it the ankle monitors? It was some kind of GPS device that they had on people. And it was overwhelmingly incorrect. Oh, for the location? And yeah. they, would, they would literally like come, they'd come and arrest them again. They'd be like, what? I've been here all day. They'd be like, no, no, no. Look at this. And it was just because it was bad. Yeah. Or it wouldn't charge and stuff like that. I think that the danger from this is not, is not even that the technology is going to be poorly implemented. I mean, that's a given. But this also kind of has an erosion factor. Because it's like, oh, this is much better than the ankle monitor. It's much better than the incarceration. But at that point, aren't you just making people used to something that's still pretty insidious? Yeah, well, the obvious thing is it's not going to be migrants. Yeah. After a year, if it works out pretty well, they're going to be like, oh, let's just do this for everybody. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and it's like, oh, you already have a thing with a camera on it. Why don't we just co-opt that? And by the way, uh, we're not going to take pictures just when you look at it. We're actually going to always be taking pictures. Exactly. It's a very chipping away kind of thing meanwhile you know you travel back into the 70s and say hey we're gonna do all this stuff and the people would freak out their head would explode and we have another sanction story but this one is unique i don't know if this has ever happened before now we did hear about <coughs> the the github and the version control stuff getting locked out of that but here we have an entire project that we can assume is well i don't know if we can assume it but if it is related to the russian government 
It's not for them to make money on because it's open source. And if you think they're hiding code in it to spy on you, you know what you could do? You could go look at it. But that's not enough. Tornado Cash co-founder reports being kicked off GitHub as industry reacts to sanctions. So Tornado Cash apparently was primarily used, or so our Department of Justice alleges, uh, primarily used by like North Korea or Iran or a combination of the two, criminal activity. And so I think someone in the DOJ has told GitHub or Microsoft's lawyers, this project probably shouldn't be on GitHub. And they said, okay. And that's no, all this is. But we also sanctioned Tornado Cash in general. Yeah, yeah. But I, but I don't think that has anything to do with Russia. I think that has to do with the old IRS story. Yeah. Like it's the crackdown on you will not hide from us. Yeah. We will see everything. And if you build a tool to get around that, even if you're tr not trying to make money for it, it's just like, hey, I'll give this to the world. No, you will be punished. <laughs> this is only going to be used for criminal activity. Well, it's not welcome on GitHub then. But I mean, you could make the same kind of arguments about security tools and that sort of thing. It's a really. They do. Yeah. <laughs> And when it comes to Iran, you might be thinking, oh, I bet they're hiding a lot of cryptocurrency payments. Well, maybe, but I don't know. This undermines it because some of them are definitely not trying to hide. They're literally press releasing it. Iran cheerfully admits using cryptocurrency to pay for imports. Yep. It's like, hey, are you using cryptocurrency to, to import things from sanctioned countries? Yeah. What? Wouldn't you? And we're doing more of it later in the year. We're really going to ramp this up. We love it. A good time to get into it, right? At, right after the crash? Yeah. I mean, I guess we have further to go, maybe. This is not shocking at all. I'm actually... Uh, I, I watch too much YouTube, I mm -hmm. think. It's a little too much. <laughs> a little too much screen time, maybe, on the old YouTube. But man, those <laughs> police chase videos are so good. Uh, TikTok, on the other hand, I have no idea about. However... I did use the YouTube shorts for like 10 minutes and I was like, oh, I see. I see what that's about. <laughs> like when I had my wisdom tooth taken out and I took a Vicodin for the first time ever and I was like, oh, I see. I see why that's dangerous. Yeah, I'm going to stay away from that. <laughs> a fifth of U.S. teens use YouTube, quote unquote, almost constantly with TikTok not far behind. This is actually interesting because I got some insight about how TikTok is used and it turns out the information uh, the they hoover up about how people are interacting with TikTok. This demographic really likes because when they search for something, all of the results are super tailored to that person in addition to what they search for, which is maybe a little bit of a contrast to what Google does. So 95% of teens use YouTube, 19% almost constantly, whereas 67% use TikTok and 16% uh, almost constantly. I don't know what almost constantly means. I guess like maybe once every, every waking 15 moment. minutes. It's easy to just to get a hit yeah. with TikTok, right? And it's, yeah, pretty much. TikTok is like the vape pen of social media. And the metaverse, we uh, have been big detractors of the metaverse. Not because I think it can't work as an idea, but just because it doesn't exist. And we're being sold something <laughs> as if it is. The most egregious thing we're being sold, online real estate. <laughs> As metaverse land prices plummet, Mark Cuban says buying digital land is the dumbest stuff ever. <laughs> I can't say anybody, if you're a viewer of this program, you probably agree with that statement. I don't know, that's true. So they were talking to him about Yuga Labs, which they did uh, a lot of stuff, and he was like, yeah, I mean, I still think it's stupid. They made a lot of money, yeah, but I still think it's stupid. And all the people that bought that land, which was well, like six months ago, yeah, they lost a ton of money. Well, I can't say that. Maybe they sold early. This is a crazy story. You don't think of... How many different ones are you aware of? Three or four. There's only fans. There's another one with fan in its name, right? Fan house? Is that what it is? I don't know. And... Uh, you're not allowed to do it on Patreon anymore, right? Mm. I think there is a third alternative. Anyway, OnlyFans is very aware of these alternatives because they are pulling an Uber. <laughs> OnlyFans bribed Meta employees, yeah, Facebook, Facebook employees, to put rival creators on terror watch list. What? <laughs> <laughs> this should be The Onion, but it's not. Uh, why? Why is this? Why is this a thing? Yeah, 
from from thought to terrorist <laughs> just from one phone call so they've been caught it's been going on since 2018 meta has identified people inside who've actually done this and uh, they ran the money through a hong kong company to hide it <laughs> there's a lot of smoking guns here interesting that's probably a lawsuit if you're one of those creators huh yeah how would you know if you're even swept up in that well, that's the thing about those terror watch lists. You don't, can't necessarily like call somebody and be like, am I on the watch list? They won't tell you. <laughs> I guess you could try to take a flight. <laughs> that's weird. They search my luggage every time now. What's going on? <laughs> and now I believe I have organized these. Um... Oh, no, no, because we're back in. Why did I put this in government? A terrible missort. We'll just roll with it. <laughs> CEO posts, posts crying selfie on LinkedIn after laying off employees and it goes viral. Oh, it's because we're on social now. I forgot. Okay, yeah, this is social media. I just didn't... I don't I don't understand why this went viral other than it was just in terrible, terrible taste. So they talk about in this article about how CEOs are trying to be more personable and real with but, their employees. But they're not. How many different selfies do you think he went through before he got one that he liked to post? That is the darkest timeline. <laughs> I guarantee you that's not one snap. <laughs> he went through, a, a. he was sitting there going through his camera roll like, all right, no, no, that's not penitent enough. <laughs> oh, I handed it up too much in that one. I'm human. I'm relatable. No, sorry. So, uh, business to business marketing agency, hyper social. Yeah. Business to business marketing agency. There is no soul behind those eyes. I guarantee it. <laughs> you can't run a business to business marketing agency and have that former employees comment the engagement challenge below. <laughs> and Elon Musk has uh, given his response to the whole Twitter debacle and his claims. Twitter says not very good. Twitter says Musk spam analysis used tool that called his own account a bot. That's the Ars Technica headline, but this is, this is the lawsuits. Like the whole, will you buy uh, Twitter? Will you not buy Twitter? Why won't you buy Twitter? The, uh, 127 pages. I, I started to dive into that, but then I decided I didn't hate myself that much. And uh, Twitter's lawyer's response to this was basically, Elon Musk is unhinged and nothing in this statement is true. Like nothing that he's saying here has anything to do with reality. He doesn't understand how the technology works. It's not a thing. And Musk really just wanted to double down on the whole, no, I used your tool and it said my account was a bot, which is not correct. So the botometer, this is Twitter's response. So they're saying that, yeah, that counts bots maybe, but bots don't have to be spam. Bots can be real. Bots can be there for a reason. People like bots. So you can't just roll them all in the same ball. And then Musk responds and he says, we're still looking, but we're definitely finding spam accounts. And uh, then Twitter's response to that is, go back and read the contract because there ain't nothing about spam accounts in that contract. <laughs> so I don't know what you're arguing about. It's not part of our business transaction. You will buy the spam bots because you offered to cash for them. Elon Musk's next argument is probably going to be you're lying to your investors, which is going to be really interesting if he goes that route. But it doesn't save him. No. It just hurts them. He'll still do it. I mean, come on. <laughs> but I don't know if that's going to get him out of that purchase. But then here's the crazy timeline, right? He comes back with that, destroys trust in Twitter as if, I mean, who has trust in Twitter at this point? <laughs> and then comes out with a competing thing. No, no, no. He's, he destroys the faith in Twitter and then is forced by the court to buy Twitter. <laughs> Seems like a win-win as long as that price goes down. No, I think they'd make him pay full yeah, price probably. in that scenario. Yeah. I don't know much about any of this. I threw it in just because, uh, you know, of course the clickbait headline, they don't start with murder, which would be the big thing. They don't start with this girl's name. They start with Instagram because that's what you'll click on. Instagram model Courtney Clinney charged with murdering her boyfriend in Florida apartment. And I know nothing about this. Well, so there she is. She's sad. She got picked up on a murder charge. And uh, they have, uh, here's the guy. So they have some, I read a different article, but they have some uh, surveillance footage of them in, a, in an elevator fighting. Mm. Like fist fighting. Oh, yeah, that's I do know about this. Yeah, yeah. And apparently the people in the apartment building, people three floors above had called the cops because they were like just killing each other fighting. 
and uh, she stabbed him. She claims she threw the knife and got the kill shot. What? No. How many human beings could do that? How many <laughs> Navy SEALs could do that? <laughs> but uh, I think they could easily prove that he was beating her pretty bad. I think she was beating him too. Will a jury look at that? They're all little pretty girl. She was getting beaten domestically. Although yeah. it's not what she told the cops. That's not gonna. That's not looking good. But. And here's something that I think we've known this for. How long have we known this? Since the '90s. I mean, <laughs> the '90s. <laughs> Facebook. I don't know that they were. They didn't have an app in those days, did they? No, I guess not. So whenever the Facebook app came out, that's when this started. We probably found out about it three, four months after that. Meta injecting code into websites to track its users, research says. Owners of Facebook and Instagram is using code to follow those who click links in its apps, according to an ex-Google engineer. So have you, if you've noticed, when you click something in one of Meta's apps, it doesn't actually leave the app. It just opens the web browser in the app, and then another click will take you somewhere else. But that's so that they can see what you do on the page. Yeah, so they can inject the JavaScript that continues tracking you as if you were still in the app. Oh, it's like, oh, look at this. You, this cook, this website has given you a unique identifier. We can use that unique identifier to correlate your data with our unique identifier. <laughs> Ta-da! Now, Facebook says, of course we do that. To protect our users. <laughs> <laughs> to protect our bottom line. <laughs> <laughs> Which is hurting. <laughs> and moving on to security, of course, it's a bunch of ransomware. Woo! Cisco was hacked by... Yan Lo Wang. Oh, that's, I think you got pretty close there. Ransomware no, Yan, game. Yan Lo Wang. Uh, Two point eight gigabyte allegedly stolen. Two point eight gig doesn't seem like a lot, but they apparently had access for a while and moved laterally. Um, Cisco caught them, but they may have also gotten a bunch of business to business agreements and um, schematics and things like that. If they got a business to business agreement, that may be targets for their next uh, their next people. So that'll be interesting. Now, they actually did not ransomware them. I think they got it ahead of time. But they did threaten to leak things, and I don't think Cisco played ball. Nope. So It's going to be embarrassing for Cisco, though, you know, being... Uh, it's like one of the reasons, like, nobody ever got fired for buying Cisco, and it's like, well, you know, what do they really bring to the table? Do you think anybody will get fired at Cisco? Yeah. Do you think anybody will get fired at Curve Finance? <laughs> <laughs> Curve Finance resolves site exploit directs users to revoke any contracts. So this was a cryptocurrency. The, the front end software for the cryptocurrency contract making thing was compromised. And uh, they really don't know the extent of the damage yet. They're still analyzing. I would love to read the email from the developers who actually came up with the crypto software that this runs on to the people who did the front end that got burned here. Because, like, we worked so hard, so hard to make this secure. And look what you did. Look what you did. So that's unfortunate. And so going back to the Tornado Cash thing, Tornado Cash now being sanctioned means that if you touch it, you will be immediately presumed to be a terrorist or a criminal. <laughs> yeah. Why else would you be using it? If yeah. you get any kind of transaction from that wallet or those what's known to be controlled by them, you are immediately going under investigation, which can be weaponized. <laughs> Someone is trolling celebrities by sending ETH from Tornado Cash. So criminals with Tornado, it's like, okay, let's take that and let's send non-trivial amounts to known ETH wallet addresses for different people, including the CEO of Coinbase, which I thought was really funny. Jimmy Fallon, the Puma clothing brand, a wallet for donations to Ukraine, that might tell you who might be behind this. <laughs> and uh, Beeple, Dave Chappelle. Why does Dave Chappelle have a public Ethereum wallet? And then we're going on to bugs, not necessarily hacks, but just bad things that are happening and updates. And it appears... The, the uh, you know, we know that Microsoft is laying off a lot of people. Yeah. Doesn't seem like they're ever going to repopulate the Windows testing team. <laughs> Windows 11 encryption bug could cause data loss and temporary PC slowdowns on newer PCs. 
that's just Windows 11 could cause temporary slowdowns on newer PCs. It's just so they didn't implement encryption correctly. Uh, you know, you don't have to use Windows. There are alternatives. And uh, they have fixed it in the most current update. But if you were affected, there is no recourse. You just lost things. Good job, guys. Great. That one was ready for production. And some more bad news for Intel. This one, for once, doesn't have anything to do with speculative execution. But it does have to do with the new features that they have very widely touted as security for their new chips. SGX, Software Guard Extensions, Intel's supposedly impregnable data fortress has been breached yet again. Uh, this is not a repeat. Well, it is kind of a repeat, but yeah, it's not great. Yikes. It gets, uh, it reads from something that it shouldn't and doesn't clear it when it's done to be fast. Turns out that's a bad idea, which means that if they can fix it, which might not even be possible because it's just, you know, like on the chip, it's going to slow things down. Yeah. SGX is, is, is architecturally flawed. It's not, uh, there's, there, there was uh, somebody that came even before this is just like, just write it off. Don't bother. Well, it kind of makes sense. They were right. Whoever predicted that was correct. Well, uh, head on over to eBay. Get yourself a software defined radio before they're all sold out because it's <laughs> going to be critical watch list. yeah well i think people are going to make there's going to be a run on them <laughs> once we start to figure out that that's the way that you deal with this threat <laughs> hacker finds a kill switch for submachine gun wielding robot dog so yeah this is fun you just hit the button and the dog goes to sleep yeah well you got to build this <laughs> it's 433 megahertz and uh, if you send it the correct signal over 433, it will shut down. It's like an emergency shunt. Just the dog just curls up like a dead spider. <laughs> How long until the you know the robot, the anthropomorphic Amazon robot warehouse workers, somebody just flies a drone over the Amazon warehouse and hits the button and the whole warehouse just shuts down? I imagine that the company that makes those those are the Chinese dogs. I can't remember the name of them. Where it's not the spots, but that company is going to stop adding that. Yeah. Or you could just put like you know a nice little. Faraday cloak over your robot dog. <laughs> that might hurt if you're trying to get video back from it. Yeah. And here is a beautiful idea. What a what a great thing. I can't imagine they, they'll be destroyed by lawsuits soon, right? I would think so. How yes. long will they survive? A phone carrier that doesn't track your browsing or location. The new pretty good privacy phone, or pretty good phone privacy, service for Android hides the data linking you to your mobile device. But because it's based on Android, it was a house built on sand. It turns out that when you communicate with a tower, it doesn't have to specifically identify you with the ISP uh, or the, the mobile carrier's account in order to work correctly. The only reason it has to do that is to make sure that you're a paying customer. Otherwise, other people might be able to piggyback on the, the network even though they're not paying customers or maybe their account is no longer valid. So the reason we can't have any privacy, the reason we, reason we have data brokers making billions in this country is to make sure that you paid your bill. All of them everywhere. And there's not really any getting around that. Well, you could do this, but yeah. I imagine they'll find a way to, to break that. And we often find big corporations not taking cybersecurity seriously. And even in, you know, sectors that you don't expect cybersecurity to be a big thing, and it becomes catastrophic. 7-Eleven stores in Denmark are closed due to a cyber attack. Sorry, Denmark. It's also hilarious how modern businesses can't do anything without connectivity. They just lock the doors. <laughs> That was true for a while with gas prices. Remember, uh, a lot of gas stations had to have that low-speed satellite link where there was a giant satellite dish on top of the gas station in order for it to work properly? Oh, yeah, and they never changed the default yeah. thing so you could make a little software-defined radio <laughs> sniffer and you could get some free gas. Or you could steal credit cards. <laughs> mm. That's terrifying, huh? Yeah. Think about that. Uh, pretty soon that's all gonna be going through Starlink who's the OnlyFans girl who's now buying gas stations oh, I can't remember 
What do you think the cybersecurity is like at her gas stations? <laughs> Probably better than average. You she think? can af- she can afford to properly secure her gas stations. I don't think she's doing anything like that. Uh, well, this happened last week, technically, but a lot of the headlines came out this week. And the big one is not, this was a paywall alternative, but the big one is what everybody is suspecting is the reason behind this. Amazon is buying iRobot, the best iRobot vacuum deals on Amazon right now. CBS, this is paid promotion. Yeah, but Amazon's buying iRobot, so be sure to shut it down. Otherwise, Amazon's going to have a map of your house. And that is what everybody was bringing up, that Amazon is going to become a data broker for what the inside of your house is like. And it can probably tell like what appliances you have, Mm -hmm. how many people are there. Yep. Is anybody in there pregnant? You know what else the Roomba, the iRobot needs? Alexa. And Alexa can listen for commands. Or even if you don't use Alexa, it can still listen for those hypersonic tags to know what sort of media you consume and how often you're home. And lots and lots of other incredibly valuable data. And Twilio, once again, I'm sure they sent out the memo, but no one reads those memos because they get fished every single week. Twilio hacked by phishing campaign targeting internet companies. Smishing. This is actually really, like, not just the Twilio hack, but, like, the whole thing that led to this is actually uh, worth a read. Um, Cloudflare caught it and dealt with it properly. Good job, Cloudflare. But I'm surprised at the number of companies that got caught up, caught up in this. And we talked about Experian and their security issues, which they did a very terrible thing. They had a, It was open. You could go in and find out anything about anybody because of the way it communicated. So now... Of course, we're going to sue them. Class action targets Experian over account security. So it turns out the criminals could just sign up as you. And it's like, oh, they don't. If you've already done that, no problem. You can do forgot password, reset password, then say you don't have access to that email address. And then they can enter your stolen information and create a new account using your information. That that was a problem was brought to their attention, I don't know, during the Experian hack like three or four years ago. They haven't fixed it. It's weird how all that outrage just evaporated because they're doing the same stuff. Yeah, yeah. They literally, they just, this should be the death penalty, the corporate death penalty. They are too stupid to do what their corporate charter says that they need to do. So they just need to dissolve. Is it stupidity or is it just apathy and maliciousness? Uh, it, would, it seems like apathy and maliciousness because they're, you know, they're just too, they're too stupid to survive. I mean, people were hitting them over the head with it there for a couple of years, <laughs> and they still refuse to really do anything. So you got to think that that's on purpose. Madness. DuckDuckGo also got in a little bit of hot water because it turned out that, now if you don't know, here's a public service annou- announcement, DuckDuckGo does not have their own search. They lease Bing search. When you use DuckDuckGo, you're using Bing. <laughs> they smish Bing with other search engines so that it's not just Bing, but... They do a little flavoring, but ultimately (laughs) you get Bing, including the tracking from Bing. Yeah, that's right. All that privacy, it turns out they were ignoring it and they're like, oh, that was a mistake. We're definitely going to stop doing that. DuckDuckGo browser's uh, stricter privacy protection will also now apply to Microsoft scripts. Whoops, that was totally an oversight that we didn't take out the Microsoft scripts. Our bad. Sorry, guys. Mia culpa. Sad. <laughs> Oops. And that is only their browser, by the way. When you use their search, because it is coming from Microsoft, Microsoft still knows that somebody's searching for that. It might not know your unique identifier necessarily, but it still gets data. And the uh, the heat is still going on in the UK. <laughs> they are not getting a break. Yeah. I saw what? there was a horse in New York City that collapsed. Like the horse things, they're just like, we can't do these because the horses are dying. Like a police horse no no it's like the the old the the old oh, town new york yeah, tours. The tours yeah yeah the horses would just collapse God, like maybe we should just make that maybe should that be a thing that probably shouldn't be a thing anymore. just not have that be a thing anymore <laughs> you know what i like is the i like the the japan version the rickshaw oh yeah i'll get some rickshaws out there probably also the same kind of a problem though with the exhaustion and collapse yeah but the horse doesn't have a choice <laughs> What about Elon Musk? Can we get Elon Musk on this? Can we get some robotic horses? I thought you wanted him to pull the rich. <laughs> anyway, they're having a real problem with the heat. 
chaos after a heat crashes computers at leading London hospitals. So it turns out that they never planned on the hospital getting this hot. So the air conditioners in the server closets are failing and the servers are overheating and data is lost and they got to do recovery and it is a mess of the highest proportion. And as we learned when the ransomware started happening at hospitals, when you turn off that internet connection, everything stops. Yeah. I actually knew somebody that ran a major regional hospital and this happened. The air conditioner, the primary air conditioner failed and the backup failed. And it was over like a holiday weekend or something when the regular staff wasn't there. Their entire storage cluster, which was like a $10 million system, uh, shut down. But before it shut down, it emailed the company that was under service contract to install it and said, hey, we're over temperature, which avoids the warranty. So not only did the thing die horribly, it was not, you know, fixable under any kind of warranty or extension or whatever. So... Yeah. Because that thing you bought isn't yours. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm going to just, you know, die. But before I die, I'm sending an email to the company to let them know that your warranty is invalid. I bet Apple is looking at that and they're like, we got to get this working for water damage. <laughs> your phone is ordered a new phone on <laughs> Apple Pay. <laughs> and finally, here's a little bit of good news because, you know, the thing about it is if you carry your phone anywhere, you are being tracked. And it's not something that's easy to do without or avoid. But it turns out the people who are tracking you are probably also carrying phones. <laughs> so guess what? This anti-tracking tool checks if you're being followed. This Raspberry Pi powered device can scan for phones around you. And if it keeps spotting the same one, it'll send you an alert. So the Bluetooth beacons, the Wi-Fi beacons, whatever else. It's like, hey, you've got a stalker or just co-workers at the office. But, you know. Software defined radio, I'm telling you. Go on eBay right now. They're cheap. Get yourself one. You actually did a video on Software Defined Radio for stuff that's on the channel. Going to be critical to have one of those in the coming wars. <laughs> the war on individualism. The war on not participating in the global machine that's doing bad things. Yes. <laughs> or as we'll call it, the genocide. <laughs> all right. What do we got for tomorrow? It's all business. All business. Isn't it? It's the end of the quarter or the 40, beginning of a new quarter. We covered an amazing amount of stories in 42 minutes. Have you noticed that we always go faster when Krista's not here? Sorry, Krista. <laughs> I don't know that that's her fault. <laughs> I don't know if people actually like that or not. I think some people say longer, some people say shorter. But it's Goldilocks time. 42 minutes is Goldilocks. It is, yeah. So we better stop. Stop.